A lot of attention surrounding this year's midterm elections in Illinois and Iowa are on the governor's races, and rightly so. A lot of money is being spent in those contests. Well, so is the race to replace Lisa Madigan as Illinois Attorney General. Her decision to not seek re-election attracted a big field for the Democrats. Eight candidates, in fact, fought for their party's nomination. Two Republicans fought it out on the primary for them as well. Democrat Kwame Raoul won his party's nomination in the March primary. Erica Harold did so for the Republicans. They're now in a battle for the job in November. Raul already spent massively outspent his opponent in the race. A lot of that leading up to the primary, though. Raul spent almost $3.2 million from the fourth quarter of 2017 through the second quarter of 2018. Harold has only spent $423,000 so far. And clearly, Raul is raising more money as well. He has $784,000 in his campaign account to spend as of now. That's more than triple the $232,000 for Harold. Kwame Raul is a Chicago native. He graduated from DePaul University with a political science degree. He got his law degree from Kent College in Chicago, worked as a Cook County prosecutor, and has been a state senator since 2004 when he was appointed to take over the seat vacated by Barack Obama when he became a United States senator. Well, it's easy for a lot of people to overlook this race given the huge amount of money being spent in Illinois' governor's race, though we will not. Illinois State Senator Kwame Raul joins us for a conversation this morning. Welcome to the program, sir. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, Senator, it's, uh, you know, you enjoy a significant fundraising advantage over your opponent, Her Erica Harrell. Do you expect that to carry you to victory? Is money buying this election like we're seeing in the governor's race? Well, uh, no. I, I, you know, I came out of, uh, as you mentioned, I came out of a very competitive eight-way primary. We had an embarrassment of riches. I was running against a former governor who had a, a huge name recognition advantage and I was trying to communicate above the noise or through the noise of a competitive gubernatorial race where far more, more money than than I spent was spent uh, on, on the airways and so it's very difficult to try to communicate through that noise and I'm well aware of that. I know my opponent um, the governor uh, takes credit for having recruited her in the race and has pledged to invest heavily in, into her into camp campaign. As well. campaign. So we're seeing a lot so of money in this race, all not clearly to the governor's levels, but we're seeing a lot spent in this as well. Uh, right. Difficult for sometimes the, the issues to actually get through. Well, Democrats have held the office since Lisa Madigan took over 15 years ago. Democrats, we know, control the state legislature and do have a decent chance of winning back the governor's office. Is this too much power for one party to have? And why wouldn't a Republican attorney general be able to provide an important check given the history of corruption in Illinois politics over the years? Well, I don't think it should be a question of what party the individual is coming from. Um, I've prided myself over the course of my career in working on a bipartisan, in, in a bipartisan manner. I think it's more uh, uh, the judgment should be an evaluation of the respective experiences of the two candidates. Uh, in my case, I have 25 years of practicing law. I've served as a prosecutor. I've tried cases both in state and federal court. I've argued cases in, at the appellate level. Uh, I've worked on the policy front. I've passed laws protecting uh, voting rights, protecting victims of sexual assault. Uh, Do you feel you can maintain the independence necessary, though, in that position, given the, the control by the Democrats and the rest of the, in the state? Absolutely. Uh, I was not a recruited candidate by anybody. I competed in an eight-way primary. I was not recruited by the governor, by, by, by the speaker, by the Senate president, by anybody in the party to run in this race. I decided to run it in the race. It was a very competitive primary, and I prevail in an independent way. Now let's look forward to some of your campaign. You're focusing on criminal justice, part of it certainly on criminal justice reform. You certainly did that in the Senate as well. You could play a bigger role as Attorney General in this area. Mm -hmm. Should, let's say for one issue, recreational marijuana. Is that something that should be legal as part of the criminal justice reform? Well, I think we, we should definitely ev evaluate it. We've, the state has taken steps in that direction. We've uh, embraced the use of uh, medical cannabis. Uh, we've decriminalized the use of small personal uh, use and amounts. small possession amounts and right. things like that. So cer certainly we're trending in that direction. But is that something but, you support? Well, we have to be careful. It depends, you know, the devil's always in the details. So one of the things is we can't uh, stick our heads in the sand and pretend like it's not out there uh, uh, widespread right, right now. To the extent that we can control it, um, the devil's always in, in the details. To what extent do we uh, uh, control the use and the prevent the use of uh, of cannabis by young young, uh, people. Well, young people. Other states have certainly gone that way so far, so that is a trend that nationally we're seeing. Let's focus on your years as a prosecutor and certainly and uh, you know your state senate experience as well. How would you address gang violence and gun violence as attorney general? How important is it to take a tough stance on prosecutions? 
I think it's important. I, you know, just uh, a year and a half ago, I sponsored legislation, bipartisan. Uh, the the uh, Republican uh, minority leader uh, was a House sponsor of the legislation uh, to hold repeat gun offenders accountable. We have to make sure that we target in on the likely offender and make sure we hold them accountable. Uh, that was something that uh, received wide bi bipartisan support and, and passed through the legislature. But we also have to look at how a shooter becomes a shooter and what, wh what are the common things in somebody's life that makes them evolve into somebody w that would take a gun and, and go out into the streets. And, and but your job as an attorney general would essentially be focusing on the, on the prosecutorial side, right? It would be both. It would be both. One of the uh, purposes, one, one of the uh, functions of the attorney general is to serve on the uh, board of the Illinois Criminal Justice Information uh, authority which um, presides over uh, grants that are to uh, formulate to policy that can might address you know people are getting to uh, to, to young yeah. people who might be is that falling their way in the game. Exactly. So we've got to be preventative as as well. We have more to talk about with State Senator Kwame Raoul. How independent he can be though when it comes to the most powerful Democrat in Illinois, for the record.